you think that her drinking and her taking so many medications in conjunction with all the drinking and all, all of that made um, this, this, this major effect? Marilyn was manic depressive and I think that's in a time where that wasn't the common term terminology for uh, people with mental uh, emotional illnesses so the um, the pills and the alcohol um, make extremes of any kind of depression so definitely it just it takes longer to get out of it and it and, and you reach for the bottle and the pills more often and and you feel depressed so instead of working through why do I feel bad today who's who's in my life that's making me feel bad um, she just instead she just masked those symptoms all the time do you think if she wasn't drinking and she wasn't taking pills and she just continued her singing career um, she wouldn't have, wouldn't have felt this this need for suicide or or death in general yeah I think that well with Marilyn she was so troubled honestly she was so depressed and I found it was the mother, not the father, that made the biggest impact on her. Um, she always felt unwanted and like she could never really have something of her own. And what happened with the, um, the drinking and stuff like that, and it was making her further down, that was just a spiral effect. Had she have gotten out of it, she would have... What Marilyn didn't have the tools to know was that the more she would take herself out of herself, and maybe give to others and do something for others. Had she have stopped being so selfishly motivated at all times, that would have been her saving grace, really, if she'd done something for someone else. But she couldn't. I mean, she's Hollywood era movie star. There's always the next person to take your place, and she had to be Marilyn. I mean, how do you stop being Marilyn? She had goals of like doing really serious work and doing something great, but. Because everybody snickered around her, she couldn't. She kept not taking herself seriously, and so every time she would have like a, a, a oomph to keep going and do something great and out and outshine what everybody would say, she would hear those demons in her head, and then she would just drop back to the same old. Oh, I'm just Marilyn. I'm just gonna just be. You know, that's all they want from me. See, that's the risk of being a starlet in that mm -hmm. era. You're always going to have someone who wants to take your place. You're always going to have someone who totally. wants to push you away, who mm -hmm. wants to be better than you. And Marilyn was beautiful. Everybody knew it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's that's actually, that was probably one of the, well, to me. Like a curse. One of, yeah, yeah. And one of the factors why she was so depressed. Jane Mansfield was supposed to be Marilyn's replacement. The bigger boobs, the... Uh, blonder, the more vivacious, you know, Marilyn was sort of fading, she was like, because with age, your, your figure's changing, and this was the new replacement, and she knew that they had it in for her to have the better, more improved Marilyn, and don't forget, with Marilyn, what happened was, she was coming, she was going out as the James Bond type girls were coming in, the hippie, the long hair, the flower, you know, she had the bouffant hairdo, and she knew she was aging, she didn't, that was a horrible thing for her. She didn't want to go there at all. How did her death happen? How did Marilyn die? Everyone's saying that it was suicide. Other people are talking about the fact that it was murder. Mm -hmm. What do you feel it was? Surprisingly enough, I'm, I'm as uh, brainwashable to the conspiracy theories. Like, even after regression, I still had questions. I was like, I, I picked up this book, somebody gave it to me where uh, I didn't actually read it. I just had flipped through to a page, and they made some seriously good points of like why you know it would be murder or whatever. Um, I I cannot see anything to do with the Kennedys murdering anybody. These were great men with great intentions. Um, she might have been in the way, but Marilyn was sweet talkable. They could have bought her out. They could have fix things for her. Sure, she, she got enraged because, you know, with pills and alcohol, you're coming up, you're coming down, your mood swings. Marilyn was suicidal on a regular basis and um, it, as, as much as she did it out of anger at the time that she committed suicide, she did regret it. And I had to suffer through those last 20 minutes of regressions over and over 
and the respiratory failure that I felt and the regret, the remorse, the shame. And what's funny is from five years old onwards, I would have these crushing chest pains, uh, uh, unbelievable things, nothing some a five-year-old should ex experience. And it always was connected to remorse and shame and guilt for something. And I was thinking, what have I done? You know, why would I feel like that at five years old? I'm playing with dolls. Uh, there was no explanation for it whatsoever. And then only after, you know, 25 something years of, of living through those crushing episodes, when we did the regressions, he unlocked that, he got rid of it. I had to experience the death for real. And it freed me of that, that pain. There were certain things in the room that dictated murder. I, I don't, can't see anything that would dictate murder other than, okay, the one thing I noticed is that um, I regressed on Eunice Murray's role in this. Um, the stories keep changing, but what I saw was an older lady feeling guilty for something she didn't, hadn't done. Now what happened was she said she had done something, but she hadn't actually done it. So now her lie had to be to cover up. Now, she's just a simple older lady. Sure, she had to have an eye on Marilyn, but um, she was now just feeling embarrassed about her own lie. Marilyn's gone already. Uh, she was definitely covering up for Bobby Kennedy. Um, much to my surprise, when I regressed, Peter Lawford and Bobby Kennedy were there between 12.30 and 2.30, but Marilyn, in my eyes, had passed already by 9 o'clock on the 4th. Um, they were looking for stuff that might implicate the Kennedys, but they didn't murder her. They just didn't feel right that she might say something or she might have written something or uh, pictures or, or something that she would leave around. They definitely were looking for that. And you, Miss Murray, Mrs. Murray was definitely covering for them. So that's, the, that's the, the look on that lady's face that was giving people the idea that she was lying. She was not lying about Marilyn's death, she was lying about the involvement because, you know, they're saying, shh, keep it quiet and stuff like that. So that's the really the only guilty thing that was well, happening there. That and they're powerful people, mm -hmm. so they can pretty much do whatever they want. For sure. And, you know, people were in love with their presidents and their presidents and their uh, attorney generals and stuff. She was no different. She really respected authority and um, she she had no reason to question what they were doing whatsoever. Marilyn's dead. She's done it to herself. I mean, she knew that. Tell the viewers a little bit about your your sure, band yeah. and your book. I'm in a classic rock band called Pandemonia and uh, you can see us at pandemoniaband.com or myspace.com Pandemonia. It's we just released a classic rock album. It's called Left to Die in the Wide Open and um, there's an animal rights song on it called Cry. Uh, proceeds go to animal rights and the book for the book Marilyn Monroe Returns, The Healing of a Soul and it really is about the healing of the soul and it can be found at www.marilyn-monroe.ca and my doctor would be more than happy to take your calls or your questions and uh, he's He's a doctor who does regressions, not just for me, for anybody. And uh, there's lots of hypnotherapists and past life regressionists. It's very common. When we first hit the news last year, there was a front page news all over the place. Lots of people came out of the woodwork because they're suffering. They don't know why. They know medications and Prozacs aren't working. It's deeper than that.